Hello and welcome once again to the Fundamentals of Ultrasound Physics Lecture Series. Today's lecture will be on image, storage, and display. Today we're going to go on a journey. We're going to follow ultrasound information all the way from the transducer to its final resting place in image storage. Along the way we're going to hit all the highlights, which starts with the scan converter and digital memory. I want you to know what it is, what it does, and how it works. We'll talk about pre-processing versus post-processing, display devices, and image storage. If you learn only one thing from this lecture, you need to understand the scan converter. When in doubt, if you are taking the ARDMS exam and you don't know the answer, the answer is probably the scan converter. I just mentioned the scan converter and digital memory. It's not really easy to describe what the difference between these two are. It's kind of a blurry line. Strictly speaking, digital memory is a storage place for information. The scan converter is technically the translator for the transducer. But in real terms, the scan converter is a computer processor and a certain part of digital memory. So we start our journey at the transducer. The transducer sends our image to the ultrasound machine, right? Except it doesn't send a completed image. What it sends is voltages. And it sends these voltages line by line to the computer. Our journey ends at the computer saved in an image format that you could easily read it on your home computer. In between, we have the scan converter. It has two main roles. It stores and builds the initial image from the transducer and then it converts that image to a more usable form. Recall that we essentially create a B-mode image by stringing together a series of A-mode images. Any given line in your B-mode image could be described as a series of varying voltages, which is what an A-mode image is. The scan converter converts these voltages into numbers and then converts those numbers into an image. We'll talk more about how it does that. What about that second rule? Why do we need the ultrasound scan converter to change the image from the transducer's form of image? Remember, the transducer uses an analog form of image, varying voltages, that doesn't really display well and make things clear for us to see. Also remember the size and shape of the transducer image is probe dependent. The image that the transducer sends for a curvilinear probe may be a weird shaped trapezoid with large gaps between the lines at the very edge of the image. The screen image that you see on your TV or on your display is rows and columns of square pixels, which doesn't really translate well from that other format. So the scan converter translate that from one to the other. To understand how the scan converter does this, we need to take a little diversion into computer talk. We need to understand the language computers speak and how to speak it ourselves. So computers do calculations and store everything in binary, which is what we're referring to when we talk about things that are digital. Basically, if you see the word digital, you can translate that as in binary. It's the computer language and you need to speak it. Binary seems really complicated at first, and I've seen people try and explain it with powers of 10 and all this other stuff. Rather than bore you with that, I want to take you back to a very simple analogy. If you find this analogy too simple, I apologize, and you're more than welcome to skip ahead. Imagine that the storage in your computer is boxes and boxes and boxes. Each box can contain only a zero or a one. That's what binary is. So how could we represent numbers in binary? Well, let's start with an example and just see if it makes sense from there. Let's imagine you have three of these boxes. Let's say each of these boxes represents a number. As you can see here, we've chosen the box on the far left to be 4, the box in the middle to be 2, and the box on the far right to be 1. Remember, each box can only store a 0 or a 1. So how would we represent 0? Well, 0 is 0, so each box gets a 0. How would we represent 1? Well, we put a 1 in the box that we've labeled 1. How would we represent 2? We put a 1 in a box that we've labeled 2. The first tricky part is 3. 
we put a 1 in the box labeled 2 and another 1 in the box labeled 1. And if you add those up, that's 3. How about 4? Well, we have another box labeled 4, so let's put a 1 there. 5 and 6 follow the same rules as 3 did. To make 5, you say, well, that's 4 plus 1. And you put a 1 in the 4 box and a 1 in the 1 box. 6 is 4 plus 2, so you put a 1 in the 4 box and a 1 in the 2 box. Using 3 boxes, you can represent the numbers 0 to 7. What if you wanted to get to 8? You need to use a new box. So we use a new box, a fourth box, and that fourth box on the far left now represents 8. Using four boxes, we can represent the numbers 0 through 15. If we want to represent 16, we add a new box. If we wanted to use 32, 32 also gets its own box. So do 64, 128, 256, 512, and 1024. If you are taking the ARDMS exam, you should absolutely be ready to recognize numbers as binary and be able to translate numbers from decimal to binary and back. So let's pause for a question. What decimal number does the binary number 1011 represent? Is it A, 10, B, 11, C, 1011, or D, 15? You may pause the lecture to decide on an answer. The answer is 11. Recall that if we're talking in boxes here, the box on the far right is 1s, the box next to that is 2, then 4, then 8. So here we have 8 plus 2 plus 1, or 11. So now you understand binary. Let's just throw a little more formal terminology on there. Each of the boxes we were talking about is called a bit. Commonly, we string 8 bits together, and that's called a byte. So how far can we count with a given set of boxes, or a given set of bits? The easy way to calculate this is 2 to the power of the number of bits. So with 3 bits, we can have 2 to the power of 3, or 8. We recall that we start counting at 0, so we can count from 0 to 7 that. With one byte, again that's 8 bits, that's 2 to the power of 8, or 256.